Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankara Ace Academy. Today's date is 18th January 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. Now before we get into the discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankara Ace Academy is starting prelims fitness test series which is called pre-fit test series and the batch 1 will be starting on 22nd January 2024. There were totally 63 test out of which 37 are half test and 6 full revision test and 7 full test. It also includes 10 CSAT test. The test mode will be conducted both offline and online. So other details regarding this test series is given in the link in the description. Kindly check it. With this, let us start the discussion. Look at this news article. Recently, Prime Minister has released 540 crore for the construction of Pukka Homes. This is under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. and it is given to particularly vulnerable tribal group families know that this component was part of recently launched pm janman scheme so in our discussion we are going to learn about pm janman scheme pradhan mantri janjati adivasi nyaya maha abhiyan scheme which is shortly called as pm janman scheme and it is launched to improve the socio economic conditions of particularly vulnerable tribal groups that is pvtgs know that the scheme was announced in the budget 2023 the center and the states will be sharing the cost of scheme in the ratio of 64 is to 36 note that the scheme will be implemented for 3 years now what are the focus area of the scheme see pm janman scheme will saturate pvtg households and habitations with the basic facilities like safe housing clean drinking water sanitation facilities etc Ministry of Tribal Affairs with the help of state governments would conduct a survey on a mobile based application developed by Bisaj N through this survey it will prepare a database of gaps in infrastructure in PVTG areas so to address these gaps pradhan mantri janman scheme will be used it will focus on 11 critical interventions through nine ministries the 11 critical interventions are permanent housing road connectivity piped water supply mobile medical units hostel construction anganwadi facilities skill development centers electricity connections solar street lighting bandhan vikas kendra and mobile towers the various schemes like pm awas poshan scheme national health mission will also be aligned with the objectives of janman mission moreover in addition to this 11 critical intervention The following interventions of other ministries will be also part of Janman scheme. Ministry of Ayush will set up Ayush Wellness Center in PVTG habitations. This is done through mobile medical units. Then Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship is working on skill and vocational training in PVTG habitations. Moreover, it will also set up multi-purpose centers and hostels for PVTG communities. So these are the important points about PM Janman scheme. With this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Look at this editorial article from Monday's newspaper. It talks about the recent split in Shiva Sena party. Now let us briefly understand the issue before discussing the article. As you all know, Shiva Sena party formed government in Maharashtra with Mr. Uddhav Thakre as chief minister in 2019. The government was formed with an alliance between Shiva Sena National Congress party and Indian National Congress but later in 2022 another Shiv Sena legislator Eknath Shinde rebelled and formed a separate faction within the party the faction under him supported Bharatiya Janata Party to become the chief minister consequently in 2022 the Uddhav Thakre led government was toppled and replaced by another government and Eknath Shinde became the new chief minister of Maharashtra now the issue here is voluntarily giving up membership of their original party or voting against the whip of the party is treated as defection and the members of legislature who do not do either of these things are liable to be disqualified under anti defection law contained in 10th schedule of constitution so it is in the hands of speaker of legislature to uphold the justice in the matter but the speaker saved shinde faction from disqualification and he declared the shinde faction to be the real shiv sena party According to the article the issue is a perfect example for deeply flawed judgment by speaker and it highlights the importance of being impartial when it comes to the office of speaker so in this background let us quickly go through some important points about speaker using our usual main sensor writing approach now this is the question 
The position of speaker in parliamentary system is often regarded as crucial for effective functioning of legislature. Discuss the role of speaker in upholding the principles of parliamentary democracy. This question can be asked in GS paper 2 under the syllabus Parliament and State Legislature Structure Functioning Conduct of Business Powers and Privileges and Issues Arising Out of This. So this is the syllabus. Now coming back to the question, the only keyword in the question is discuss. So we are expected to examine and analyze various aspects of the topic. In the introduction, we can mention that Article 93 of Indian Constitution provides for Office of Speaker for Lok Sabha. The Speaker is not just presiding officer of the House, he also acts as the head of the House and its representatives. His decision in all parliamentary matters is final and he is the guardian of powers and privileges of the members. Overall, the Speaker plays a vital role in functioning of parliamentary democracy by ensuring that Parliament operates in orderly, transparent and accountable manner. In this way, you can highlight the importance of Speaker in parliamentary system. Now moving on to the main body of the answer. Here we are going to split the body of the answer into two halves. In first half, we are going to write about the role of Speaker in upholding principles of parliamentary democracy. In the second half, we are going to write the issues associated with the position of Speaker. And in conclusion, we are going to suggest some way forward. First, let us start with the role of Speaker in upholding parliamentary democracy. Firstly, with respect to order of the House, as per Article 95 of Constitution, Speaker is a presiding officer of the House. So, he is vested with the powers to maintain order and decorum in the House. And he is the final interpreter of provisions of Constitution of India, rules of procedure and code of business in Lok Sabha. So, he ensures a smooth functioning of the Lok Sabha. Secondly, with respect to the provisions of the bill, the Lok Sabha speaker decides the order in which the bills should be considered, assigns the bill to the committees for consideration, and he also certifies the final text of the bills. Additionally, under Article 110 of Constitution, speaker decides whether a bill is money bill or not, and his decision is final. Thirdly, the representation of People Act 1951, he decides the questions of disqualification of member of Lok Sabha. So he decides under the provisions of 10th schedule of the constitution. Finally, the speaker can adjourn the house or suspend the meeting in the absence of quorum. That is one tenth of the total strength of the house. This is to ensure the accountability of legislature. Secondly, committees of the house are constituted by speaker and they function under the speaker's overall direction. This is to maintain impartiality and ensure that committee work is conducted in a fair and unbiased manner. So these are the important roles played by speaker in upholding the principles of parliamentary democracy. Now moving on to the second part of the answer. Here we are going to highlight the issues in the office of speaker. The first issue is favoring the ruling party for future benefits. See several judgments on anti-defection law reflects the partition nature of speakers. For example, the judgment of speaker in the split of Sivasena case, this act causes huge confusions and frequent disruptions in lawmaking process and affects the stability of government. The second issue is putting the party interest over national interest. Currently, we follow the practice where speaker is an active member of ruling party. So there are high chances that speaker can refuse the debate or discussion that may embarrass the ruling party. The third issue is not referring the bills to committees. See, in recent times, there is a trend where parliamentary proceedings get stalled and this has led to passing of important bills without any discussion. This is also harmful for effective functioning of democracy. For example, in 2021 monsoon session, not a single bill was referred to any select committee. So these are the important issues associated with the functioning of speaker. Now we have come to the conclusion part. The effectiveness of speaker in upholding principles of parliamentary democracy largely depends on their commitment to impartiality, integrity and the rule of law. So the impartiality of office is very important to make parliamentary democracy work in true sense. In that way, once a speaker, always a speaker practice from UK can be implemented by eliminating the disadvantages in it. So in this way, we can end the answer. With this, we conclude this discussion and let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. Union Fertilizer Minister said that consistent steps taken by Union Government is yielding their results in fertilizer sector. The efforts of government has led to self-reliance in the production of fertilizers and there is decrease in subsidies. 
So in our discussion, let us see the basics of fertilizer subsidies in India. First of all, agricultural subsidies are income support provided to the farmers to reduce their cost of production and to increase their income. An important component of agricultural subsidy is fertilizer subsidy. See, it refers to purchase of fertilizers by the farmers at a price lower than the market price. So, the difference between the MRP and the purchasing price is given as a subsidy to the fertilizer company by the government. Fertilizer subsidy plays an important role in the growth of agricultural productivity and thereby it ensures the food security of our nation. There are broadly two types of fertilizer in India. Urea based fertilizer and non urea based fertilizers. Out of this, urea is the only fertilizer whose price is regulated by government. Then there is non urea based fertilizer. It means the prices of these fertilizers are not fixed by the government but by the companies. This is because these types of fertilizers are regulated under nutrient based subsidy scheme, that is NBS scheme. Now let us see what is NBS scheme. It is implemented since 2010 by the Department of Fertilizers under Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. Under the scheme, fertilizers are given at subsidized rates based on the nutrients in the fertilizer, that is nitrogen, phosphate, potash and sulphur. And this scheme does not include urea based fertilizers. Now let us see the recent initiatives of agricultural subsidy regime. See in 2015, the center made it mandatory to coat all indigenously manufactured and imported urea with neem oil. So this is called neem coated urea. Recently there was an initiative called Nano Urea by Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative. Under the scheme, the urea is produced as a nanoparticles and it is used as fertilizer. It was launched with the aim of reducing the unbalanced and indiscriminate use of conventional urea. So it will increase the crop productivity and reduce the soil, air and water pollution. So this is about the neem coated urea and nano urea. So this is all about the discussion. We have seen the two important types of fertilizers and the subsidies for those fertilizers. With this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Look at this news article. It talks about certain. Recently a vulnerability in government portals has exposed the personal details of top industrialists, celebrities and sports persons and it has been complained to certain. So this is what the article is about. In this context, let us quickly go through some basics of certain for our prelims exam. Firstly know that certain stands for Computer Emergency Response Team India. It is national agency responsible for handling and responding to cyber security incidents in India. Certain was established under Section 70B of Information Technology Act in 2004. It operates under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So basically, CERTIN helps to prevent cyber threat and provides quick response services. They also work with government departments, industry associations and even citizens to ensure cyber security in the country. CERTIN have two main roles. They were reactive and proactive. Reactively, they respond to incidents and provide support to affected organizations. Proactively, they issue security guidelines advisories to prevent future attacks. They also analyze trends and collaborate with other organizations to improve cyber security. Some of the main responsibilities of CERTIN includes they collect data, analyze and share information about cyber incidents. They also gather data about different cyber attacks and make sure others are aware of them. They also provide forecasts and alerts about potential cyber security incidents. This helps organizations and individuals prepare and protect themselves in advance. In case of emergency cybersecurity incidents, CERTIN takes immediate action to handle the situation. Lastly, they may have additional responsibilities as defined by Information Technology Act. So these are various responsibilities of CERTIN. Now who can report the incidents to CERTIN? Basically, anyone can report complaint to certain and this includes system administrators, owners, service providers or even individuals. We can report various types of cyber security incidents like unauthorized access, malware attacks, identity theft and more. Given here are the other incidents that can be reported. You can pause the video and go through it. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this article from science page. It talks about our body's gut system and its importance. See, there has been various research on how environment diseases and diets can affect the composition of our gut microbiome. 
So in this discussion, we are going to see about the importance of microbiome which is present in our gut. First of all, what is gut? See, gut is also called as gastrointestinal tract. It includes the portions of alimentary canal, particularly the stomach and intestines. Now let us see about human microbiome community in our gut. The mi microbiome refers to a diverse community of microorganisms including bacteria, viruses, fungi and other microbes that inhibit a particular environment. The human microbiome means trillions of microorganisms living in our human body especially in the gastrointestinal tract. This human microbiome plays a crucial role in various physiological functions including digestion, nutrient absorption and immune system development. It is complex and dynamic ecosystem that interacts with the host organism and can impact the health and well-being of uh, humans. See, each person has unique network of microbiome that is originally determined by one's DNA. A person is first exposed to microorganisms during the initial days of birth and through the mother's breast milk. So the type of microorganisms depends solely on the species found in the mother. Later on, environmental exposures and diet can change one's microbiome to be either beneficial to health or greater risk for disease. Now what is the influence of this microbiome on human health? The composition and balance of microbiome have been linked to various aspects of health. An imbalance in the microbiome has been associated with conditions like obesity, diabetes, autoimmune diseases and gastrointestinal disorders. The microbiome stimulates the immune system and breaks down potentially toxic food components and it also helpful in synthesizing various vitamins and amino acids. The regular use of antibiotics can disrupt the balance of microbiome by killing both harmful and beneficial bacteria. The diet also plays a significant role in shaping the composition of microbiome. For example, high fiber diets can promote the growth of beneficial bacteria in our gut. So this is the importance of human microbiome which is present in our gut. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. It is about particularly vulnerable tribal groups in India. PVTGs reside in 18 states and one union territory. This statement is correct. A stagnant or declining population is one of the criteria for determining PVTG status. This statement is also correct. There are 95 PVTGs officially notified in the country so far. This is incorrect. There were 75 PVTGs identified in the country so far. Irular and Kondaradi tribes are included in the list of PVTGs. Yes, this statement is correct. So the correct answer is option C, 1, 2, 4. This question is asked in prelims exam 2019. Now look at the second question. It is about chemical fertilizers in India. At present, retail price of chemical fertilizers is market driven and not administered by the government. This statement is incorrect. As we know that the chemical fertilizers are heavily subsidized and administered by government. Now look at the second statement. Ammonia which is input of urea is produced from natural gas. Yes, this statement is correct. Sulfur which is a raw material for phosphoric acid fertilizer is a byproduct of oil refineries. This statement is also correct. So the correct answer is option B, 2 and 3. Now look at the third question. Which of the following is a main cause for transmission of hepatitis virus? The correct answer is option B, sharing drug needles. Now look at the fourth question. In India, it is legally mandatory for which of the following to report on cyber security incidents? Service providers, data centers, body corporate, intermediaries. The correct answer is option C, all four. According to rule 12 of 13, except any individual organization or corporate entity, all others including service providers, data centers, body corporate and intermediaries, all are mandated to report cyber security incidents to certain. Hence the correct answer is option C. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.